week. This week we're doing refrigerator rescue, and we thank Scotia Bank and Food Share for supporting us this week. So, last week we did vegetables two ways. Is there any way you guys can think of of vegetables that you could cook two ways that you have, or things you did this week? So I did cauliflower two ways this week. So that was an interesting one. I cooked the greens and I cooked the florets, the cauliflower. And remember, if anyone's cooking with us this week, that you remember to, if you're with your parents, if you're using any heat or any knives, and remember to always wash your hands. And this week we're doing refrigerator rescue and we're just focusing on using old produce and stuff that we have in our fridge in a new way. Okay, and before we jump into our recipes today, we have a couple of special guests with us. Um, I'm just gonna ask if you're with us and you're just joining, if you can just put yourself on mute while, um, while we're speaking. And if you can, and we'll ask you to come off mute when we do a Q and A. Um, and so we have a couple of special guests with us. Um, so first of all, uh, I'm going to introduce Coach Zach. Uh, he's going to be leading us through a warm up today. So Zach, if you want to um, say hello and lead us through our warm up. Thanks so much, Sonia. Uh, very happy to be here, guys. My name is Zach. I coach basketball at Launchpad. Um, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm hoping I can pick up a few tips and tricks as well. Uh, so the one thing we're going to need for this warm up, if you have a pair of socks, if you're wearing them, that's perfect. You take them off, roll them up into a ball. If you don't have socks with you, you can also get a dish towel or anything like that. Uh, just tie it into a ball. So you have something like this. The biggest thing uh, the most important thing here is that you have something that is okay to drop and if it hits the computer or hits the phone, it's not going to do any kind of damage, okay? So I'll give you guys just a second to make sure that everyone's got one of those. Either a pair of socks or something they can just throw up and down and catch, okay? You're going to want to have just enough space to stand up and move your arms around so you're not going to hit anything off the counter or hit a TV or anything like that. All right, we'll give it about 10 more seconds. Just make sure that everyone's on their feet, ready to go. Okay, now the first thing we're gonna do, um, if you've ever been in one of my basketball classes, you know that we do this in almost all of them. We're just gonna wrap the ball, and I'm gonna call this a ball from now on. We're gonna wrap the ball behind our head and to our other hand, okay? I just want you to do this 10 times and then we're gonna switch directions and go the other way. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we're gonna do the same thing starting with our other hand behind one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, shake your shoulders out, shake your arms a little bit, and now we're gonna go around our waist, okay? So same thing, 10 times around this way, and then 10 times around this way. Uh, so we got 20 wraps. This time I wanna see you guys go as fast as you can. So finish these 20 wraps as quickly as possible. Okay, nine, 10, and then switch directions. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and 10, perfect. Really good work so far guys, really good. Now we're gonna put our feet together, put our legs together and bend our knees and we're gonna do the same thing around both knees like this, okay? So same thing, I want you to go as fast as you can, 10 around one way and then 10 around the other way. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is all three of those one after another. So we're gonna do five wraps around our head, five wraps around our waist, 
five wraps around our knees, and then go back to our waist, back to our head for a total of 25 wraps total. Okay? Whenever you're ready, you can get started and go. One, two, three, four, five. 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 And one, two, three, four, five. Awesome job, guys. Awesome work. That's the first part of our warm up. The next one we're going to do um, for any, uh, anyone who likes basketball, this is a very good applicable uh, warm up for basketball, but it's also really good just to get your arms warmed up, get your, uh, uh, get your blood flowing, and work on your hand eye coordination a little bit. So this time we're going to put the ball underneath our leg and hand it to our other leg, and we're going to do the same thing to the other leg. We're going to do a figure eight around both legs. We're going to do this for 15 seconds as many times as you can. Once you get comfortable with it, try to push the speed a little, okay? Got 10 seconds left. Keep it up, keep it up. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Very good, very good. Now we're going to do the exact same thing. But we're going to bring the ball from behind our leg to the front and then behind to the front. So we're still doing a figure eight. It's just coming from the opposite direction. Okay. So again, 15 seconds. And 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Zero. Very good. Stand up straight. Shake your legs out a little. <clears throat> now this next part, in my opinion, is the funnest part. Okay, this is called a clap catch game. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold the ball in one hand. We're going to toss it to the other hand and catch it. But while the ball is in the air, we're going to clap. So toss, clap, catch. One, two, three. One, two, three. Toss, clap, catch. One, two, three. One, two, three. Keep it going, keep it going. We're doing this for about 10 more seconds. If it's too easy, try clapping twice, okay? Five, four, eight, two, one, zero. Very good, guys, very good. Now, we're gonna hold the ball in front of our chest like this with both hands. We're gonna toss it up just a little bit, about this high, and then we're gonna clap behind our back and catch the ball. So toss, clap, catch. One, two, three. One, two, three. And again, just for about 10 seconds, if it's too easy, try to clap in front and then behind and then catch. Oh. Five, four, three, two, one. Awesome job, guys. Awesome job. This time, we're going to hold the ball in front of our chest like this. We're going to let go of it, and we're going to try to clap above the ball and catch it again, okay? We're going to hold it in front of our chest, let go, clap above, and then catch. So really quick hands here. Oh, five more seconds. Four, three, two, one zero very good very good all right we got one little warm-up game left this is the last thing we're going to do i want you to hold the ball in one hand straight out like this you're going to rest this arm on your other arm okay so i got one arm going this way one arm going straight out okay the, the hand that's going straight out has the ball you're going to drop it go underneath your hand and catch it again okay so drop and catch, drop and catch, drop and catch, drop and catch. There we go. In five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, guys, that is the end of my warm up game. I hope it got you 
a little warmed up, maybe a little bit sweaty. And uh, I'm gonna pass it back over to Sonia. Thank you very much, guys. Amazing, thank you so much, Zach. Please yeah. give him a quick uh, thank you and round of applause for getting us warmed up and moving. You know, we're sitting lot, lots throughout the day, so big, big thank you for that. Um, so now I'm going to introduce um, another special guest we have. Uh, so we have Chef Chris Hogg joining us today. Um, we're really, really thankful to have him. So please um, thank him, give him some um, a warm welcome in the chat. Um, so Chef uh, Chris Hogg, he is the Chef de Cuisine of the Quick Service Department at MLSE Scotiabank Arena. So he's over at Scotia, uh, I'm not sure, I think Scotiabank Arena right now. Um, they're in a, a lot of places, <laughs> really busy over there. Um, and Chris has 16 years of chefing experience from hotels to golf clubs, fine dining, and uh, the last six years he's been part of the MLSE team. And he oversees a huge food operation. Um, he has over 100 cooks reporting to him. Um, and, you know, aside from that, a world traveler, competitor on Food Network's Firemasters, and he was the recipient of the 2019 MLSE Care Awards, also doing lots of good work in the community. Um, so I'm gonna throw it over to Chris now and also just ask you if you can do a little introduction to yourself and just kind of your journey to date. Of course, well, thank you for the great intro. Uh, as Sonia mentioned, I'm Chris Hogg, I'm a chef of cuisine and quick service. Um, I'm that kind of guy that has a passion for food, that has a passion for creating really fun things. So what better way to do it than in a professional kitchen? Uh, I've been fortunate enough to be with the MLSE team for six years. Um, funny story, I actually wanted to be a police officer growing up. Uh, my whole family is police officers and they weren't accepting co-op students. So they said, well, why don't you try a kitchen? And I'm like, eh, maybe not for me. And within three days, four days, I fell in love with the industry. And 16 years later, here I am. Uh, work in my dream job with the best team and uh, love what I do every day. Amazing. Nice. Thank you so much for that little intro. And I know we spent some time getting warmed up. So when you're ready, um, if you want to take us through what, what recipes we're making today. Let's do it. So big part of the food rescue is being able to use products that you already have that you may not have another use for or that you may think are going bad. So today we're gonna to be making two items with you guys. We're gonna be making a fridge rescue smoothie. In addition to that, we're gonna be making a fridge rescue barbecue sauce. Very versatile with the barbecue sauce. You can add it to steak, you can add it to chicken, you can add it to whatever you would like. Uh, great flavors and why don't we get started? So big thing about cooking guys is timing and making sure we have everything done right so that everything's hot and ready to go at the right time. That being said, our barbecue sauce is going to take a little bit of time to cook and infuse the flavor. So we're going to get started with that. So I'm just going to turn the camera around here slightly, guys, just so you can see my cutting board here. Who knows how to properly cut an onion? That is the question. As you know, the onion has the two parts. Best way, slice off your top, slice off your bottom. Now for safety as well, we do it this way so that the onion stays flat and it can't run away from you. Thus making sure that your fingers are safe. You're gonna cut it once right down the middle. So you see the swirls? We're gonna cut it right down the middle and we're gonna peel. As you'll see on the onions, the onions actually have vertical lines going all the way across. Use those as your guidelines while cutting. So if you want sliced onions, cut right along the lines. As you'll see, nice sliced onions. If you want diced onions, what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut along the lines the same way you did for slice, but then you're gonna make a horizontal cut. Now, obviously, watch your fingers, be very careful while doing this. Knife safety is always paramount. Then when you cut down on it, if you look, we have a nice fine chopped onion. So multiple ways to cut an onion. I just wanted to show you guys that first. Spin the camera back around here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start our barbecue sauce first. Trick to any kind of cooking that you wanna do is you wanna make sure your pan is starting off nice and hot. Almost there. So we're gonna start off with one teaspoon of sunflower oil. 
just to start to get a little cook going in our onions and garlic. So we'll get that going nice and hot. My onions, I already had chopped up, and now you guys are experts at how to chop an onion, so now you guys are ready to go. So we are going to add about a quarter worth of onions, a quarter onion worth, sorry, and we're gonna let that start to cook off. As I mentioned, one of the biggest parts about cooking is making sure those flavors have time to infuse in whatever you're gonna be making. Today, right now, is our onions. So we're gonna let those cook off just for a couple minutes before we add our garlic. Who doesn't love nice garlic? Except for vampires. Vampires don't like garlic. So we'll start to see a good cook. The onions will start to become translucent. Uh, meaning you can almost see through them and they have a nice aroma, a nice earthy smell. So once you get to that stage, you're going to add your garlic and begin to cook that off. So we're going to let that go there. While that's cooking, we're going to start to get our other prep items ready. We have yellow mustard. We have ketchup. We have apple cider vinegar. We have soya sauce. We have Worcestershire sauce. We have smoked paprika. And a key to a good barbecue sauce with a little bit of sweetness, we have the brown sugar here. So as I mentioned, we have to work, think about timing. So because we want all these flavors to infuse, we're gonna start our barbecue sauce, then shift over to our smoothie. So we're gonna add a pinch of smoked paprika to our onions and let those flavors mix and gather and create all those wonderful flavors. So I'm going to turn that down and that's going to start to cook off for a few minutes guys. While that's happening I'm going to spin us around here again. And let's start to get a smoothie ready. So Sometimes we hey. sit there and we, we look uh, in our fridge. Chris, yeah, yes. just before we jump into the smoothie, um, I want to take a second just to ask, does anybody have questions about the barbecue sauce so far? I know one question came into the chat and folks like you can take yourself off mute if you want to ask it yourself. But one chat, uh, question came in, which was, I'm allergic to sunflower oil. What other oil could I use? You can use canola oil. You can use vegetable oil. Uh, you want to use something that's going to have a very low smoke point because you're just sauteing your vegetables and stuff in it. Uh, so a canola oil, a simple vegetable oil, something like that. Something that's not going to have too much flavor like an olive oil, whereas that will start to change the flavor profile of the uh, barbecue sauce. Yeah. So, okay. Well, the timing works out pretty good here because we got a nice cook on our onions. Our flavors are starting to become translucent and we are good. So we want to get, make sure this gets a lot of good, nice cook time. So we're going to start to add some ingredients. We want to add a half cup of brown sugar. We want to add Oh, none of these lids are coming off nicely for me. We want to add three or teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. Okay. We want to add two teaspoons of soya sauce. The soya sauce adds a little earthy flavors and the saltiness that we want to uh, add to our flavor. We're going to add a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. We're going to add one cup of ketchup. Ketchup is the base of your barbecue sauce. That's where you're going to start to get all your flavors and all that. So we're going to add the one cup of ketchup. And for a little tartness, a little bit of um, bitterness, we're going to add one uh, we are going to add 
a little bit of mustard, about two teaspoons worth of yellow mustard to the mix. We're gonna give that a good mixture. Already starting to look like a beautiful barbecue sauce. We're gonna start to get that cooking. How was that so far, guys? Everyone good? Anyone have any questions? The other thing is, is this is where you can let the creativeness of cooking come in. If you like spicy and you wanna add peppers to it, scotch bonnets or finger chilies or even jalapenos, you can to give your barbecue sauce a little extra heat. If you like chipotle or you wanna add other flavors to it, this is your chance. This is the time where everything's gonna be cooking. All your flavors are gonna be infusing and blending and coming in. I do have a little Tabasco here for a little heat, which we'll add shortly. Uh, but you wanna make sure that everything comes together nicely and starts to cook and blends well. Speaking of blending, let me turn. So as mentioned, I know I'm guilty of this as well. When I go shopping, I tend to overdo it a little bit. A few days later, I open up my fridge and I realize, what am I gonna do with all this extra stuff? Hence the fruit rescue. So I had a couple strawberries kicking around, some raspberries, some blueberries, and a few grapes. Now, these are all great. These are all your sweetness and your natural sugars. And these are the things that are gonna keep you going. But green vegetables are also great to throw into a smoothie because for health reasons and benefits and natural, natural flavors, greens are always great to throw in. So here I had a little extra kale and a little extra spinach. Apples are a great natural sweetener as well. Uh, great for energy, natural energy. This is the kind of food that keeps you going. And of course, a little yogurt. So I have already pre-washed all my vegetables and all my greens. Uh, just so I sped it up a little bit here for the show. So what we're gonna do is we are going to start off by grating our carrot. I forgot to mention the carrots. Don't let these things go to waste. Now, when making a smoothie, you're gonna use a blender, but you wanna make sure that it's easier for the blender's motor. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna grate the carrot. I'm gonna turn that down here. We're gonna grate the carrots so it's easier on the blender when we try to grab, blend it. So I have what would be the equivalent of one carrot here. I'm gonna add just a smidgen more. And this is yet again, this is where the creativeness, also another reason I got into this amazing industry is the ability to create, the ability to have uniqueness and add your own personal touch. What I always tell people is you can take one chicken breast and cook it a hundred different ways. That is the fun part of being a chef. So we have our carrots grated. We have our raspberries, our strawberries, our grapes, our blueberries. And I'm gonna cut up one of these apples right now. So one thing that you wanna to try to avoid to the best of your ability is white granulated sugar. White granulated sugar takes a lot longer in your body to naturally break down, thus making it longer before you feel the benefits of all the energy that you're gonna be receiving. The joy of fruit is fruit contains natural sugars. Those natural sugars are what will keep you going. So we are going to add some apples. I have the equivalent of sort of half an apple, three quarters of an apple. We're gonna add some of our grapes, nice and juicy grapes. We're gonna add our strawberries, our raspberries. our blueberries, our 
our kale, I'm gonna add about a pinch worth and the equivalent amount of spinach as well. Now to give it that creaminess, we are going to be adding yogurt. So I got about a cup of yogurt in here. And ice, the quintessential item in this movie. So this may get a little loud here for a minute or so. Um, Cause I just have to blend this up here. Where is my pedal going? Uh, sorry guys, just one second. No worry. Um, Chris, while you're doing that and while you have the blender on, we're just going to launch a, a quick trivia question for folks. Um, so oh, you'll, awesome. see, you'll see that pop up on the screen. So um, we're obviously talking all about refrigerator rescue, using up stuff in our fridges today. So the first question is around storage. So for best quality, how soon after purchase is it recommended to use eggs? So you can give us your answer. Um, is it one week, two weeks, three to five weeks, or two to three months? So please vote what your answer is. We'll give you, um, I would say like 30 seconds while he's blending that up. <laughs> Wait for a few more answers to come in. Really mixed results so far in this one. Got to make sure we get a good one. Okay, I'll give another 10 seconds for you to get your answers in. Okay, so we had equal votes for one week, two weeks, and three to five weeks. Um, the original answer is, um, so eggs should be stored in their original carton in the coldest part of the refrigerator um, and not in the door. Um, you can leave them for three to five weeks at the most. So that is kind of the max that you can leave them in um, and they'll be good to eat. Um, and the sell by date might be expired by that time, but the eggs should still be safe to use. Um, so that is the answer three to five weeks. Awesome. So, All right. what I've done here. So, I have now smoothified our smoothie. Now, we haven't had, we didn't put any sugar because we're using the natural sugars of the fruits and utilizing all that. If I'm going to add a little sweetness, I will always try to use honey. Uh, yet again, just a natural sweetener. Um, so I'm gonna add a little bit of honey to this just to finish. I am gonna blend for five seconds here. Sorry guys, I know that may be a little loud for you. So what we have now is a food rescue fruit smoothie ready to go now here's the thing mm, that's good that's good so whatever leftover fruits you may have if you have bananas if you have peaches if you have whatever kind of fruit you're using a great way to utilize it is in a smoothie very healthy great way to start the day very tasty. Bet you're wondering, how is our barbecue sauce doing? Let's show you. So, still on the stove back here. Oh, that was my basketball from coach. Uh, okay, so we're still over here. Now, our barbecue sauce has started to cook. It's steaming. I know you guys don't have smell vision, but if you did, you would be even hungrier right now. So you can see that all the flavors, the ketchup, the mustard, the vinegar, have all started to infuse, and it smells outstanding. So the next step that we're gonna have to do is we're gonna add 
a little Tabasco, just for that little bit of heat. A couple drops here or there, but it's all depending on personal preference. If you like it really spicy, like I do, uh, go for it. Add the spice, add the flavors. If you wanted to add international flares to it, you could add a little curry spice. You could add a little cumin. You could add whatever flavors that you like to eat you're going to be the one eating it and share showcasing to your friends and family make it how you like it okay so we started to get a good cook on this now so what we're going to do we're going to add it to a pot or to a bowl okay and now we need to puree this so we have all of our items they're all in here it's good it's tasty now we're gonna get a hand blender. We're gonna puree it so it's nice and smooth. Nice and smooth, I can smell it. So this is the point of the process where we need to make sure that our flavors are what we're looking for. So let's see. Outstanding. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. A little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. And we're gonna let that sit. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna put this into an airtight container. We're gonna wrap it, keep it in the fridge, and you can add it to whatever you want. As I said, your chicken, your steaks, your protein, your vegetables. You wanna add it to your cereal? Go ahead. Porridge in the morning? I'd prefer the smoothie over the barbecue sauce, but to each his own. There we have our delicious barbecue sauce. That looks so good. And I wish we could have taste vision or something to <laughs> be able to taste it. Um, I had a couple of questions actually, as you're blending it up, because I could see that it's um, piping hot. You could see the steam coming off of it. Yeah. Is there anything we need to be aware of safety wise when like blending a liquid that's super hot like that? And then like in terms of storing it in the fridge, like would you let it sit for a little bit? Of course. So when it comes to safety, safety is always paramount. So you want to make sure that when you are doing it, you are tilting it away from yourself because if it's gonna splash, it's gonna splash outwards and not towards you. That would be first. The other thing when it comes to these kind of equipment, anytime you're using equipment such as a hand blender, a mixer or so forth, when you're cleaning it, always unplug it because you know these blades are very sharp on the inside. You don't wanna be putting your finger in there and by chance turning on the unit. So when it's time to clean up, make sure you unplug Make sure you're keeping your hands free and clear of all the blades that are attached. Um, and, to, and be very smart. Uh, cooking is a very fun trade. It is very something very fun to do. But we are surrounded by things of danger. We are surrounded by sharp knives and fire and heat. So making sure you work slowly, making sure you work smart, and making sure you work safe is paramount in the kitchen. That's your oh, thank, thank you for that. Um, I saw you doing it really quickly and I think everyone else did too, but I know that comes with lots of expertise. So I just wanted to ask because I've definitely been burned doing that the wrong way. <laughs> oh, when, when I start to suntan and all my old burns come out, that's when uh, years of experience of burning makes me smart now. Yeah, and then um, we just had a question from Ruben who's asking, can you use something other than a hand blender? So you can use a food processor. You can use uh, the same Vitamix like I used for our smoothie, a blender. Uh, anything that's gonna give you a good smooth consistency. If you don't have 
um, either a blender or a food processor or, or a piece of equipment like that, you can take the extra time in your preparation to make sure those onions are very, very fine, almost paste. You can do the same with your garlic, uh, making sure your garlic is almost a paste. It will make your sauce, the end result of your sauce, a little bit of a thicker consistency, um, but the same flavor profiles will still be there. Nice. You're very and I welcome. Was, I was gonna say, um, I don't um, typically blend my barbecue sauce at all. I just kind of leave the chunks of onion and garlic in there and that's kind of how I like it. And you can leave it chunky and do it that way for sure. Definitely. Most definitely. But that's where, and again, that's where the creativeness and the ability to create things in a kitchen is a personal thing. Um, you may do one thing one way and I'll do it, but both flavors are going to be outstanding and both are going to taste delicious and everyone's going to want to come back for dinner. That's, that's the thing. For sure. What would be some of your favorite things to pair this sauce with? Could you tell us like what are, I guess, what are some ideas for dinner that we, we could have tonight? With this barbecue sauce, because of the sweetness with it, I would pair it with probably a nice chicken breast, a nice oven roasted chicken breast, put that over top. Um, I am a huge fan of steak. Uh, I eat steak a few times a week. I love it. This would be great on that as well. Um, my cook time on it wasn't very long, obviously, uh, due to timing here. But the longer I cook it, the more flavors are going to cook in, the darker the sauce will become, and the more palatable it will be. Um, so that being said, the longer I would cook it down, the more I would aim it towards a red meat. The shorter cook down I would do, I would aim it towards a poultry, a chicken, or so forth. Nice. And any... Um... Any veggie options that you might include? I know we have some folks who have different dietary needs. So the joy of the barbecue sauce is if you can put it on whatever you fancy. Um, eggplant, if you wanna do a nice grilled eggplant uh, and coat it with the barbecue sauce. Uh, a common thing that we in the industry do is like cauliflower steaks. Whereas you can actually cut the cauliflower, do the steak, and then put the barbecue sauce over top of it. Right, supplement, literally supplement that meat for the vegetable and your dinner will be equally as enjoyable, if not more. Sounds delicious. Um, I know we've had some folks just join us. Um, so for those who just joined us, um, Chef Chris, uh, who is our guest today, he was making barbecue sauce and a smoothie. Um, and for those who've been with us, we've had you on mute, but like you can definitely take yourself off mute now if anybody wants to ask any questions. It's a great time um, to feel free to interact. Please, it doesn't necessarily even have to be about the barbecue sauce or the smoothie. If you want to know about my previous cooking places, ask me. If you want advice on a dish, ask me. Chef, um, yes. you used to make ketchup in your barbecue sauce. Is there any other thing you use instead of ketchup or like would it have to be something tomato based? So the tomato base is primary. Uh, you can use tomato paste. Uh, you can use, if you wanted to go pure spice, you could use the chipotle puree, your chipotle peppers with the juice of chipotle and adobe sauce. Use that as your base. Now that's going to be a very spicy barbecue sauce. Uh, but you want to get those the sweetness of the tomatoes because that's where your richness is going to come from. Uh, and as I said, the longer you cook it down, the more of it releases and the more flavor. Um, Tomato-based barbecue sauces are primarily the way that we would do things. Now you can add, you can do it with molasses. You can do it. Um, there's so many different variations, but your main base will primarily be your tomato or your ketchup. Um, we use the ketchup, or I use the ketchup for this example. It's more readily available. It's something you would just grab out of your fridge and go. Um, and it's just part of the food, food rescue. I know I always sit with ketchup in my fridge and I always think, what am I going to do with this? So barbecue sauce would be the answer. Yeah. Cool. 
Thanks. I haven't seen any other questions come in, so I'll just keep asking questions I have. Go for uh, it. <laughs> so um, in making the smoothie, is there any way that you would add, um, say, a protein to that? Uh, I would add, uh, you could, you could. Uh, I would primarily keep it with just the fruits and the sweetness and so forth. Um, if you wanted to add some egg whites to it, you could add some egg whites to it. Uh, just to add that little bit of oomph, uh, chai seed, um, certain types of seeds you can add to it just to give that extra natural boost. Um, yet again, the variations in the sky is the limit when it comes to smoothies. Uh, if you had granola in your fridge, or if you had and you turned it into a parfait, um, so many options. You can get, take this smoothie that we just made, get some um, cornflakes, crush some cornflakes up over top just to give it that little texture, just to mix it up. Be creative and then have fun with it. Some of the greatest recipes that were discovered oh. or some of the greatest dishes that were made were made by accident. A little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this, and there we go. Could you add I like silk and question. tofu? Sorry? Could you add like silk and tofu or something like that? You could, yep, you very easily could. Yep, definitely. Definitely. I did see a question show up about what was my favorite food? I believe, I think, uh, I'm not sure who asked that. So, yeah, my Ed and Elizabeth. My, okay, great question. I, I get asked this often. I spent the first 10 years of my career in small Italian restaurants. So, Italian food is my go to. When I go out to dinner, when I'm going to make some dinner at home, I love making fresh pasta. I think fresh pasta is the greatest thing because you get the feel of the dough while you're kneading it. And you make it up your thing, you roll it all out, you cut your pieces or you extrude it for your noodles. Um, and you literally are making your dinner from scratch, right? So if I were to say my favorite type of food to make and or eat, definitely fresh pasta. Yet again, the creativeness with pasta is why I love it as much. There's so much because you can add, you can have it like a chicken Alfredo one way, or you can go primavera another way, or you can go gorgonzola. The, the options are endless. I have a question. Yes. Uh, chef, can, can you can we remove the yogurt from the smoothie? Uh, you can. Uh, you can remove the yogurt and add another um, dairy product. So if you want to add coconut milk, or if you wanted to add um, if you wanted to add heavy cream, or if you wanted to add regular milk, or if you wanted to, I know some people will have dairy issues, so you could add dairy free milk. You need to have something that's going to add that little bit of creaminess to it as well as smoothing it out. Um, almond milk is a big thing in my house. Uh, we drink a lot of almond milk in our coffees and stuff. So when I make my wife a smoothie, I use almond milk, right? It just adds that extra, the extra um, energy in there using those supplements. The yogurt is great. It's just a plain Greek yogurt, uh, but there are other options available, definitely. Now, when you're doing that, when you're adding more of a liquefied item, such as an almond milk or a cream or so forth, you want to be careful when adding it because you don't want your smoothie to be too runny. You still want your smoothie to have that thicker consistency. Um, so just making sure you're adding a little at a time, not overdoing it. You can always add more. You can never take away. It's the same thing with salt, any kind of seasoning you're going to do. Always start light because you can always add more. Once you over salt something or over season something, it's a lot of work to recoup it and go backwards and try to fix it in that sense. But if you just add a pinch and taste and a pinch and taste, you'll know that your ratios are gonna be great. Yes, thank you. You're very welcome. And while you were, um... While you're answering that one, another question came from Hannah and Elizabeth. If you like baking, and I guess I'll add on it, like, and if so, what, what do you like to make? 
I will be honest, baking is not my strong suit. But I actually started off when I was about 11 or 12 years old at home every Thursday night was baking night with my mom and I. So we would make muffins or cookies or something like that. So funny is I actually started off my career baking, but it's not my strongest suit now. Um, I have the biggest sweet tooth. I will get a sweet tooth and eat chocolate all night long. And so a nice chocolate cake is if I'm going to bake something, chocolate cake is my go-to. That sounds amazing. And I feel like lots of baking questions, if folks have it, please ask us in the future. Chef V is definitely a go-to for baking questions. Oh, uh, definitely. I can still, I can still maybe answer some of them. Just yeah. The strongest. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. One of the biggest desserts that I used to make all the time being in the Italian restaurants was the tiramisu and the creme brulees and all those and creme caramel. So I do have experience baking them. Um, but if I'm sitting at home on a Sunday, I'm going steak over cake. <laughs> For sure. I was just wondering, I'm sorry that I missed, missed the lesson, but I look forward to the video later. Um, I'm just wondering, do you cook much Asian food, Chef? And if so, what would you recommend substituting into recipes instead of sesame oil? Very good question. Um, so I do toy around with Asian cuisine all the time. Um, sesame oil is a very strong predominant flavor and all, a teaspoon can go a mile. In supplements of that, um, I would just start off with just a regular oil when you're sauteing and stuff instead of the sesame oil, then transition into like a, an oyster sauce or a hoisin, something that's still going to have that flavor profile that you're looking for without the tartness, without the sharpness of the sunflower or sesame oil. I know sesame is a big allergy concern for a lot of people. And that's um, it's one of my son's allergies. He's got many, but it's one that keeps us from ever eating Asian food. With so him. if using soya sauce in the right way okay. is fantastic. Um, one of my go-tos at home is I will literally take the pack of Mr. Noodle soup and I will add a little soy sauce to it. I will add a little hoisin to it and I'll cook that. Um, one of the other chefs, Chef Matt, who hosted last week's session actually, posted something for us and I can, I'll get him to share it with you guys as well, but it's his ramen noodle special where it's the ramen noodles, it's peanut butter. It's, he's got a whole bunch of different things to it, but it's exceptional, right? Okay. So there are ways around the sesame oil, um, utilizing your soy sauce, uh, utilizing like a hoisin or an oyster sauce. Um, that would be my best recommendations. Okay. The oyster sauce, I think is safe for my son. Hoisin, I have a hard time. I, I only once saw a version of it that might've been safe and then the store didn't even With the notes. Uh, <laughs> I just saw yeah, the label on the shelf. Read the ingredient, reading the ingredients and making sure that that sesame oil isn't the base of it is good. But also utilizing Asian vegetables and making, getting those natural flavors out of those. So get your bok choy and, you know, infuse all those flavors and let it all release. Little seasoning. And the garlic Fresh. and the ginger, I found the Garlic recipe and the ginger. And it was soy sauce, okay. garlic and ginger. And it was like, oh, that's really good. And that was easy. And, and I got an Asian dish I can cook and he can eat. And he can eat, and, that, and that's your base, your garlic, yeah. your ginger, your oil, and then your soy sauce. As yes. Standard. Yeah, okay. Thank you. I'll try a little dash of oyster sauce sometime, because I'm pretty sure he's safe with that. Beautiful. Let me know. Thank you. Thanks. Uh so another question I just saw come in from Ruben was, what do you recommend using avocado oil for in the kitchen? That's a good one. I, I have that, no is, idea. that is a really good, that's a really good one. <laughs> avocado oil. I would say a nice avocado vinaigrette, right? If you take your avocado oil and use that as a base and add your rice wine vinegar or a, um, a champagne vin and make a dressing with that, Avocado oil also has a very, very high smoke point. Um, so you can cook with it. 
make your dressings with it. Um, another thing, very high protein, very high. You can make um, egg yolks, add your avocado oil, and make a dressing doing it that way. Um, similar, like, it would go along the road to like a Caesar dressing sort of, but it's got, it'll have that avocado flavor to it, uh, which will be really good. Avocado oil, I could, you could supplement it for a lot. I wouldn't saute with it. I wouldn't uh, cook down too much with it because you want to make sure you keep all those flavors while you're doing it. So I would make it into a dressing. I would make it into a vinaigrette. Um, something like that would be great. Nice. Does anyone else have any questions that they want to ask? Uh -huh. There was one more from Hannah and Elizabeth, and they said, if you could learn to bake something new, what would it be? Ooh, I am all about learning. So you are, you're never too old to learn, and, you're, and even though I've been in this industry a long time, I can learn something from, from somebody who was brand new in the industry, right? So um, that's the joy of it, is teaching each other. If I could cook or bake anything, what would it be? Learn to bake anything. That's a good one. That is a very good one. I'm all about, um, like my favorite international cuisine would be, um, I would probably say Indian cuisine. So maybe a nice traditional Indian dessert uh, that I could be in there and learn how to make from scratch. Um, yet again, it's all about that from scratch cooking. So being able to learn a, a culturally way of doing something and being engulfed in it and learn and do it that way. That's what I would probably say, just narrow it down to anything specific. Um, I don't think I could specifically do, but whatever I could learn, I would be very interested to learn. Yeah, yeah. and I, I actually want to take that question and throw it over to everyone else. Like if there's something that you would want to learn how to make, let us know, like throw it in the chat or send me an email. Um, I'll throw my email in the chat because this is what this program is about, making sure that you can do things that you want to do too. I think someone was trying to chat, so I'm going to yeah, let yeah. Gaspar come off mute. Yes, I have one last question. Thank you. Thank you for sure. allowing me. Uh, chef, uh, when it comes to cook, using wine for cooking, what is the best or easy one to use, red or white? It depends on what you're doing it for. Um, so if you're cooking a red meat, if you're going to make, oh no, sabuco, if you're going to make short ribs, you're going to make uh, anything like that, you want to use your red wine. Your red wine is what will cook down and give you your nice glaze and your nice sauce. When you're making um, an Alfredo, a carbonara, um, anything like that where you want to make sure that the flavor or that the sauce is staying lighter is where you would use your white wine. Commonly in the kitchens for us, when we're sauteing, um, we would use our white wines to deglaze our pan. So when we're deglazing our pans, what it's doing is it's burning off the alcohol from the wine, but lifting off all the flavors from the bottom of the pan. So that's where you start to get all your flavors. And that would be, if I were making a beef sauce, uh, for example, I would do it the same way, but then switch to the red wine just to keep it that color and keep it going there. So red for red meat, white for fish, pastas, and so forth. Thank you. You're very welcome. Nice. Um, so we only have a couple minutes left. Does anybody else have any other questions before we have to sign off? One more quick, quick hopefully quick question. You For said sure. you spend Last a lot one. of time, chef, cooking yes. Italian food. I yes. always liked fettuccine carbonara. And then yes, when I went on a trip to Rome, I discovered fettuccine carbonara in the majority of restaurants in Toronto has nothing to do with Roma, Roman carbonara but I fell in love with their spaghetti carbonara. Um, mm. What spices? I got a spice mixture, but I've run out and I don't know exactly what was in it. I know it was black pepper and I don't know if it was parsley, dried parsley would, that was it, in it. It would be it was, parsley. It would, and I think there was onion in it. It should be onion powder, garlic powder, um, parsley. Um, you may see a little bit of uh, fresh thyme in there. 
I, it all depends on which region that you're in. The big thing about Italy is every different region is going to do something. And this, this was Rome. Will make it. And this was Rome. So you're northern. So Carbonara is actually probably one of my favorite, uh, personally. Um, but the thing with the Carbonara is just keeping it simple, but letting those flavors go. So stop paying your garlic, your shallots, your onions deglazing, adding your egg yolk, and let that cook down. Let that all come together and infuse. Let it cook a little while longer, pull off, and it's great. But your main spices will be your salt, your pepper, your garlic powder, your onion powder, your parsley, and it could be little miscellaneous things up here. But those would be your five base premises. Okay, thank you very sure. much. Love your purple You're very raptors. Welcome. Go raps. Wish they didn't change colors. <laughs> I, loved, I loved the black and purple and red. <laughs> oh, it looks so good. <laughs> thank you. You're very welcome. Okay. Um, well, thank you everyone for your questions and everyone for participating. Um, as Fiona put in, if you're making anything that we've made today or in recent classes, please take photos, send them to us. We've seen a lot of your creations so far and they always look fantastic. Um, so please, please share. Um, and obviously a big, big thank you um, to Chris. Um, thank you so much for joining us. If people can oh, send, so send some appreciation in the chat and um, give them a round of applause. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just gonna launch a quick end of class poll to get your feedback. So please give us um, some feedback on what you thought of today's class, anything you wanna see changed in the future. Um, but most of all, Huge thank you, Chris. Uh, we loved having oh, you. We always love having you at Launchpad and hopefully someday soon back in the building, but nice to have you with us virtually too. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for the invite. Um, yet again, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, or you want to make your dishes and take photos, we love seeing those kind of things and seeing the fruit of the labor. So keep it coming, show the pictures, show the energy, have fun with it, enjoy your food and be creative. That is the biggest thing. Be creative and figure out what works for you.